<laughs> Hello once again folks, tell me the fight to arrive reached. You're very welcome to another video from Gun Dog and Fly. And today I'm going to tie for you a pike fly. Now as most of you will be aware, my foray into pi pike fly fishing is a relatively recent thing. And um, I have to say that I'm really, really enjoying it. And um, I've learned quite a bit uh, in the last 12 months or so since I've started pike fly fishing and um, I've had quite a measure of success. Now the flies I've been using, I've been doing it by trial and error if you like and uh, so what I've found is um, there's one particular design of fly that works really well for me and um, it's kind of a hodgepodge of different elements of different flies put together and uh, best thing I can do is tie it for you and show you what it's all about so let's get to it. Right, <laughs> to tie this fly you will need the following. Now I think I've thought of everything, if I haven't I'll include it as I go on. So first thing is anyway, you're going to need quite a big hook. This is an 8-0 and uh, it's a sea fishing hook but um, it does the job just fine, it's quite heavy. Now I've squeezed down the barb in it, um, I think pike are deserving of the same respect as the trout and I squeeze the barbs assuming there are any on, on all the hooks. So a size 8-0 hook. Now the tying thread I'm using is, um, it's Kevlar essentially, uh, GSP, any of those really really strong threads you'll need. Um, lead wire, oh, yeah. most important white hackles, super glue, bucktail, white, we just you don't necessarily have to have the sort of beigey brown in it but white is the overall color of the fly and a bit of flesh pearly sort of flesh so um, just to mention that <coughs> this fly uh, like I said has been very successful for myself caught a lot of pike on it including some quite big pike and I've given it to some other people, given the fly to some other people. Some people have bought the fly and they've used it in various places around the country on rivers and lakes. They also found it to be very productive. And I've even had some people who've taken it back to the US and they've used the same fly on pike and muskie. Now, I've, I've never caught a muskie. All I've ever seen is photographs of them, but this fly works really well on muskie as well. So for those of you who are on that side of the pond you might also be interested in this fly. So I'm going to zoom the camera in now and get to it. Okay, here we go. Now, hook is massive when you consider that most of the flies I've tied throughout the years are generally size 16, 18. This is a big change. Okay. A quick bed of tying thread. Right down to near the bend. Now, <coughs> white hackles. These are hen hackles, which are ideal. They come relatively cheap. And I'm going to pull out four of four long ones. Two. And two more. Second of caught three there. Those two will do fine. Alright. Now tying in these hackles, I think is probably one of the reasons why this fly works so well. Um, I'm going to show you what I do. You notice the curvature. I'm going to curve this towards myself and tie it in. It's not a difficult fly to tie. Um, most fly tires should be easily able to handle a fly like this 
Okay, the other two hackles, the same length but curved towards you if you like. So I have two curved towards me and two are curving towards you. Just a little bit longer. Here we go. Now you needn't be too particular about trimming off the waist. This stuff here won't do any harm whatsoever. So, the idea being, as you pull the fly through the water, these hackles will move in and out. So as you pull, like, um, as you draw the fly through the water, the hackles will close together, and then you stop or relax at any point, the hackles will spread apart. So you've got that movement in the fly which I think is one of the principal reasons that it works so well. Now, lead wire. Just to give it a little bit of weight. Now you might say the hook is heavy enough as it is, but after you've put on the bucktail, that tends to give it a bit of floatability. So I found that the bit of lead wire is more or less essential just to get it down um, under the surface. So now with the lead wire just a little drop of super glue just to hold that in place. By the way I've been using super glue for years and um, it's only in recent times I started using the super glue with the brush. Really really handy. Okay now Again, white hackles, so a really big one. Tie it in by the tip. Now, Double the hackle back like that. And wind it on. Folding it back on itself all the time. Now after three or four turns you need to catch it with the thread. Pike have sharp teeth and they tend to fray. They shred it. If you if you don't tie it in enough, it, it they'll break it. As I said. So again, three or four more turns and tie it in. Every three or four turns just give a turn of thread just to hold everything in place. And that will make it sort of really secure. So really long hackles are a help when doing this. There we go. Now, where did I put it? Now another big hackle. It takes quite a while to tie one of these actually. It takes about, depending on of course um, how quick you are at it, but it takes me about, I'd say when I'm in a hurry, about 15 to 20 minutes. So again, tie it in by the tip. risk of sounding repetitive, tie it in after every three or four turns.
Well. Righty oh, yeah, just a little bit of flesh. Don't overdo it. I find that um just a little goes a long way, so I'm only using what maybe half a dozen little strands. Throw it in there so that it goes roughly the whole length of the fly. And tie that in. That's more than enough, just just a little bit. Okay, next, bucktail. So, pinch of bucktail, you can see how much there. And again, this goes roughly the whole length of the fly, but I'm, I'm gonna push it I'm going to put a, two turns of thread around it like that, two or three, and then I'm going to move it around the hook so it goes more or less all the way around and then tighten down. Now, now this time we're going to do what I've only recently learned to do it's called hollow tying. So as you can see there another bunch of bucktail. Now you can, if I can find it, um, if you want to be very particular, you can comb out any loose material out of the, the bucktail. Now this time we're going to tie it in in reverse. So again, going to put two or three turns on it and push it around the shank of the hook and now tighten down, tie it into place. And this piece here, this um, when I push back the bucktail, this section here will give us the shape we're looking for essentially. So now what I do um, with this just to get, give it a start I have this roll of thread here and I just give it a push like that and then grab it. Okay and tie in. Now to keep it flared back magical super glue again so I'm just going to hold it in place and just a little drop of super glue rubbed in like I said the brush type super glue is ideal for this purpose not held yet so if you if you don't mind getting super glue on your fingers rub it back like that and you can pinch it into place okay now repeat the process again Level the ends. Okay. Now, same procedure. A couple of turns. Push it around with your fingers. And again, the roll of thread. Tighten down, push it back, and 
again the, the glue. It. That's the right kind of shape. Now, what you can do, if you like, just for experimentation, I've done it and it's uh, it's it's worked as well. Is I've just the next bunch of deer hair I've used, say a slightly different color, say uh, an olive or a black or whatever takes your fancy. So what I'm going to do with uh, the final bunch is I'm just going to include a little bit of the sort of beigey brown if you like just to um, demonstrate it. So again put out a nice bunch Again, tied in in reverse. So the three turns around, carry it around with your fingers, tighten down, and push back. super glue. So it's kind of a repetitive process but that's just the nature of it. Good. Now there's a small bit of room left here, so what I'm going to do is just for um, variety's sake, I'm just going to put a tiny bit of a brighter colour on the front. So uh, let's see. I'm choose something like just a little bit of this chartreuse, which is a popular colour for pike flies. That was just a little, it's just to fill that little gap just there. Uh -huh. the ends. going to tighten down there and I'm just going to push that up on the top like that and again the magic ingredient Now almost there. So what I'm going to do now is whip finish. Now you can at this point, you can add eyes. Now I have found that 
in my experience it's not really necessary to add eyes but I will add eyes just to show you how it's done and there's nothing to it really it's a very simple process these are oh, these are stick-on eyes they're available from fly shops or you can buy them online if you feel it's necessary to use them so what I do is stick it on like that try and match it in at the other side so that they um, appear like a natural now when when the eyes are in position what I do then is again I just use super glue and I just move it around like that just around the outside and that tends to creep in under the eye and hold it in position and that's it folks that's the fly and um, that's been working so well for me and for many others incredibly effective it's probably about maybe what possibly four and a half five inches long but it's um, relatively small for a pike fly I'm told because I've seen flies that are tied by people who've been doing it a lot longer than me and they are often twice or three times as big as this but I have found that this size works perfectly well for me so there you go folks that's it uh, suggest a name for it please that would be interesting and uh, hope you enjoyed watching me tying it So there you go folks, that's it, not too difficult. I think it's the overall shape, once it gets wet, it sort of has a fish-like shape. So maybe that's part of the reason, but um, I think really it's to do with the hackles at the back, the way they pulse. When you move it through the water, people have remarked on it um, when they've seen it, that the action in it is incredible. And um, it provokes really, really aggressive strikes. So anyway, um, that's it folks. I hope you enjoyed watching the video and um, if you did and you're not already a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel and I'd really appreciate a bit of support. There's a link in the description to this video to my Patreon page where any bit of support would be um, appreciated. So that's it folks, thanks very much again for joining me. Go to meal and mahagui as ok ver cholo dot arish dagas be me hentarish live on kid or ella is on gall in biggie slime i guess biggie eggy is cracked slang of oil